Hey, what's going on everybody? How's it going? In this video, I wanted to talk to you about virtual ENV. Um, so what is virtual ENV? Virtual ENV is a way that you can uh, separate different Python environments uh, for different projects. Um, so why would you want to do something like this? Um, for example, say that you have uh, multiple projects um, and they all rely on a single package, say it's Flask or Django or something like that. Um, each one of these projects uh, may be using a different version of Django or a different version of Flask. Um, now if you go and upgrade that package and your global uh, sites packages, then it could break a couple of your websites. Um, that might not be what you want to do. Um, it would be better if each of those projects had an isolated environment where they had only the dependencies and the packages that they need and uh, the specific versions that they needed. And that's what virtual ENV allows us to do. It allows us to make those different Python environments. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and I'll kind of show you how this works. Now I already have virtual ENV installed on my machine. If you don't have it installed on your machine, just do a pip install virtual ENV. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a pip list and you can see in my global site packages, I have um, all these different packages um, all at a specific version. Now let's use virtual env to make a few different Python environments. First, I like to make a directory um, that is called environments uh, to keep all these in one place. And I'll go ahead and uh, cd to that directory. Now if I do an ls here, you can see that this directory is currently empty. So to make our first virtual environment, let's just type in virtual env, and I'm just going to call this one project1 underscore env. Hit enter. And you can see what this said here is that it was it went ahead and installed setup tools and pip for you. Uh, so as soon as you um, go into that environment, then you can use those to start installing packages. So in order to activate this uh, this new Python environment, all you have to do is type in source and then the name of the environment. We chose project1 underscore env. Then go into bin and then activate. Hit enter. And now we're in our new Python environment. Uh, the way that you can tell this is it will now uh, add this to your prompt. Even in, when I clear out my prompt, it still says project1 env here at the top. And that's one indicator that we are currently um, in that environment. We can also type in um, which Python and if we type in which Python uh, you can see that the path uh, to the Python that we're using is within our environments and project one env slash bin slash Python. I can do the same thing uh, with pip and you can see that the pip that we're using is inside of our project one environment. So now if I do a pip list here then you can see we only have uh, pip and setup tools. We don't have all those uh, global pack site packages that uh, were listed earlier whenever we were outside of this environment. So let's go ahead and install a few packages into uh, this new Python environment. So there we have NumPy installed and now I'll go ahead and install PyTZ. And let me install one more just so that we uh, have a few packages to work with. I'll do PSUtil. So now let's go ahead and do a, a pip list. And you can see all the uh, packages that we just installed in this environment. Now let's say I wanted to um, export all these packages and their version numbers to use in another project. Uh, with that, I can just do pip freeze and let's do this tac tac local here and what this does is uh, you can also uh, use your global site packages within a uh, virtual Python environment. Um, uh, we didn't choose to do that but if we had then we would have all those global site packages available to us. If you do a git freeze local then what that does is it takes only the local dependencies um, that you had in your Python environment. Now let's go ahead and output this to a requirements.txt file and let me do an ls to make sure we got that. If we do a cat on the requirements file you can see that we have all of our packages and version numbers there. And now say that you wanted to get out of your 
Python environment. You want to go back uh, to being in the global environment. All you have to do to get out of your virtual environment is to type in deactivate. And now you can see that our prompt no longer shows up. If I type in which Python, then this is the Python that I'm using uh, in my global environment. Also, if I do a pip list, then you can see that it goes back to all my global site packages. So now you can see if I do an ls here, uh, we still have this project one environment. What if I wanted to get rid of that altogether? I just wanted to uh, play around in a Python environment for a little while to test something out, and now I want to get rid of it. Well, we already deactivated it, and after you deactivate it, uh, all you have to do is uh, delete it. So I can just do an rmrf, uh, type in project one environment there. If I do an ls, then it's gone. And that's it. That's all it takes to uh, get rid of um, a virtual environment. So now we still have this requirements.txt file here. Um, let's go ahead and make a, another virtual environment. Um, but instead of just typing in the project name here, uh, let's do a tac p. And what we can do here is we can specify a specific version of uh, Python to use. So let's do user bin and I'll do Python 2.6. Oh, and it uh, looks like I did that path wrong. Let me go back here and put that in and that should do it. Oh, sorry about that. And that time I forgot to do the project name. Uh, so anyways, yeah, we have, so we can specify the version of Python that we want to use. And now I have to put in a project name here. So I'll just call this uh, pi26 underscore env. So now if I do an ls, you can see that we have our pi26 underscore env. And just like before, we can do source and the name of our environment, bin, and activate. And now you can see that our prompt has changed and we have uh, this pi26 underscore env up here in parentheses. If I do which Python, then you can see that we are currently in this uh, Python environment. If I do a Python dash dash version, then now you can see that we are in fact uh, using this Python 2.6.9. Um, so with that requirements.txt file that we had earlier, if we want to install those packages within um, this virtual environment, we can just do a pip install tag r, then requirements.txt, and it should go out and grab all of those for us. And now you can see if I do a pip list after those are installed, then you can see that we have all of our pa packages here and all of the uh, correct versions. So at this point, you could begin working on your project uh, in whatever environment that you want. And as soon as you are done working on that project or you want to switch projects, you can just go to deactivate. And now you can see that our prompt has disappeared and we're back uh, using our uh, global installation of Python and all of our global packages. I do want to point one thing out that I probably should have pointed out earlier. Um, if I do a, an ls here, uh, our pi26 underscore env, um, what these, these virtual environments, they are, they're meant to be environments for uh, your dependencies and your packages and uh, things like that for your project, but they're not actually for your project files. You wouldn't want to go in and start uh, building uh, your project files within your uh, within your virtual environment because uh, you know you want to be able to uh, uh, pass these along and throw them away uh, whenever you want. So you don't want to have all of your project files in these virtual environments. They're really just intended uh, to separate out the packages, dependencies, and the versions that you're going to use from project to project. So with that said, that pretty much touches on the basics of uh, virtual environments in Python. Um, you know, if you have any questions or if I left anything out, uh, feel free to ask in the comments section below. Um, be sure to subscribe for future tips and tutorials, and thank you guys for watching.